Ukrainian drone operators laugh. Russians complain about worthless electronic warfare systems. The Defense Forces of Ukraine on June the 18th destroyed or damaged more than 100 Russian vehicles while losing only 30 of their own. Such losses of the enemy army are due to the fact that the Russian Federation cannot defend itself against Ukrainian drones due to poor electronic warfare systems, Forbes reports. This was almost a record high number of daily losses for the Russians as well as a record wide gap between Russian and Ukrainian losses in one day. More than 70 of the approximately 100 strikes on Russian equipment were carried out by drones costing no more than $500. Ukrainians receive such drones every month, amounting to about 100,000 pieces, the material says. In addition, the publication noted that despite the fact that Russia produces a wide range of radio jamming devices to protect against drones, many of them are not effective and simply do not work. Thus, one Russian blogger said that a drone silencer costing $2,400, which is sold by one popular Russian social media channel, is simply worthless and not worth the money. He complains that such much-touted anti-drone weapons, which are in fact ineffective and do not help in any way, give false hope to the Russian military, which leads to their death. It's even scary to imagine how many people died mistakenly relying on these funds, the blogger wrote. He also cited a long list of technical errors and criticized the weight and size of the muffler and a carrying handle that keeps breaking. Among these technical errors are incorrectly selected and incorrectly configured antennas. In a properly constructed jamming system, the antennas have the correct shape and size and are directed in the right direction to broadcast radio noise, which, according to the concept, should exceed the drone's own radio communications over a large area. But in Russian systems, the antennas are directed upward, which makes it possible for Ukrainian drones to find a vulnerable spot and strike. The publication quotes the words of a Russian blogger. In addition, he added that this muffler gets hot quickly because there are no vents through which the fan can draw in cold air and exhaust hot air. High temperatures cause the system components to deteriorate and it begins to perform its main function worse. The Russians who sell non-working silencers are killing our soldiers for our money. And Ukrainian drone operators fly over this miracle and just laugh, wrote a Russian blogger. Putin fears his plane can be shot down even in Russia. He flies everywhere in a company of fighters. Russian President Vladimir Putin has started flying with fighter jets even around Russian regions. Previously, military aircraft accompanied him only on foreign trips, writes the agency. Vladimir Putin flew to Yakutsk on June the 18th. Residents of the city published several videos and photos on social media with a fighter jet accompanying his plane. As military analyst Yan Matveyev told the agency, the footage shows an Su-30SM. The agency analyzed the feeds of state agencies and telegram channels and found no reports since the beginning of the war about fighter jets accompanying the Russian president's plane during visits to Russian cities. In January 2024, before Putin's visit to Kaliningrad, Dmitry Peskov was asked whether the president would be accompanied by fighter jets, but he avoided answering this question. The media regularly writes about fighter jets accompanying Putin during international missions. This was the case during his flights to Belarus in December 2022, in November 2023 and in May 2024. Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan in May. In December 2023, the Russian Defense Ministry even published footage of Su-35 fighter jets that accompanied Putin's plane during a flight to the UAE. Peskov then explained that this was done for security reasons. The region is restless, and if the UAE and Saudi Arabia are stable, safe countries, then the surrounding area, the adjacent region, is certainly full of danger and unpredictability. Earlier, the media reported that Vladimir Putin began wearing a bulletproof vest at public events. At the same time, the Kremlin officially states that there is no need to increase security measures for the president. In particular, Press Secretary Dmitry Peskov, commenting on the assassination attempt on Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico, said in mid-May that security measures remain at the regular level. Russia is winning over France and the US in Africa, which also affects the war in Ukraine. France intends to reduce the number of its forces stationed in the West 
and Central Africa for around 600 troops in compliance with President Emmanuel Macron's policy of limiting the country's military presence on the continent, AFP reported citing sources. According to the outlet, citing two government officials and a military source, all of whom requested anonymity, Paris will maintain only about 100 troops in the Central African state of Gabon, down from 350 currently there, and around 300 personnel in Chad, down from 1,000. In Côte d'Ivoire and Senegal, where there are contingents of 600 and 350 forces respectively, Paris reportedly plans to downsize to around 100 troops in each of the West African nations. President Macron announced a noticeable reduction in France's military presence in Africa early last year amid a wave of anti-French sentiment in several former colonies, particularly in the Sahel region. Protests against the European country have grown in recent years, sparked by alleged military shortcomings and accusations of interference in the internal affairs of former colonies. In December 2022, Paris withdrew troops from the Central African Republic, citing an alleged closer relationship between the African country and Russia. Several other former French colonies on the continent, including Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger, have cancelled military partnerships with Paris and turned to Moscow for assistance in combating terrorism. The Sahel has been plagued by Islamic extremism since 2011 following a NATO intervention on behalf of insurgents in Libya. Last August, a group of French lawmakers wrote to Macron expressing their dissatisfaction with France's African policy failures, which they claim have resulted in deteriorating relations with former colonies. At present, many African countries have now concluded security agreements with Russia, which has been seeking to expand its footprint on the continent. Russia is emerging as the security partner of choice for a growing number of African governments in the region, displacing traditional allies like France and the United States. Moscow has aggressively expanded its military cooperation with African nations by using the private security company Wagner and its likely successor, African Corps, with Russian mercenaries taking up roles from protecting African leaders to helping states fight extremism. The Polish Institute of Internal Affairs said in a study that in creating the African Corps, Russia took an assertive approach to expand its military presence in Africa. Moscow is also seeking political support, or at least neutrality, from many of Africa's 54 countries over its invasion of Ukraine. African nations make up the largest voting bloc at the United Nations and have been more divided than any other group on General Assembly resolutions criticizing Russia's actions in Ukraine.